Live right, live right, live right, live. Live right, live right, live right, live. I don't want no teenage queen. I don't want no teenage queen. I just want my M14. I just want my M14. If I die and come back soon. If I die and come back soon. Box me up and take me home. Box me up and take me home. I want to be your drill instructor. I want to be your drill instructor. I want to cut off all my hair. I want to cut off. Just cause you couldn't get your foot on the bait proper, don't you ball me up, punk. Punk! Listen, you can always strap some nice sleeves in and ball your ass off any time I like. Shit. You only just got those sides cause poor old Joe bought it. All right, quit hollering. What's the matter, soldier? This jerk almost got his fender up my butt. Call it, corporal. You heard me. Get back in the driver's seat, both of you. In this man's army, we got a job to do. Blimey, that's Joe's Jeep! Man, it's a It's true. Hubman did have a fight with a GI back in March. He was in a cafe near the market. What was the fight about? Alban Fossi's boy was making a pass at me and he was jealous. This happened before. Alban's very possessive. And free with his fists. Listen, you have to know something. Alban hates Americans. Why? His father was a U.S. serviceman at the NATO headquarters in the 50s. He got Alban's mother pregnant and then they posted him back to the States. She never saw him again. Oh. But didn't you know Joe was English? Not till afterwards, when we heard about him being missing. Joe would never have abandoned his jeep. No, sir. That's why we know something must have happened to him. Nothing you remember? Nothing special on the day he left the campsite? He helped cook breakfast. Fried egg and corn hash, flapjacks and maple syrup. Rob him out of my bivouac on account of me being a four-star general. Is your name really Patton? Eric Patton. Honest. Hey, I was last to see Joe. He sat at breakfast writing a postcard. Then he said he was going into Enfleur to buy a stamp. Never short again. Sergeant Evis suggested Joe may have had some personal problems. Make him go AWOL, you mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Way we understand it, Joe was into drugs a few years ago. Quite heavy. But he slew the dragon. Never had no drugs on our outings. No, sir, not in this man's army. But do you think it's possible drugs may have had something to do with his disappearance? Who knows? Oi, you guys. The cops didn't think of this. Joe read somewhere that in the war, if you were delivering a communique and there was a risk of being captured, you kept your secret papers behind the mirror. What do you got there, soldier? Take it of some kind, sir. Writing on the back. Joe's writing. Daniel de Mer de Dieppe. The Lasso Centre. The car registration on the back. I think you boys may have caught sight of the enemy, as they say, General. Hello. Ah, oh, très bon. Oh, yes. Yes, I know this place. It's uh, right on the seafront. That, Trevor, is precisely the date on which Joe vanished. Uh, and, and the car number. Huh? Huh? Let me know if you strike lucky. Okay. Good luck. Right. See what he makes of that. 
Now, tell me about Joe and drugs. dealers in the classroom in a district like this but that's where the habit started we didn't know anything about it of course but not at school but eventually he was hooked we got him into an addiction clinic in the west country three months including a spell at a halfway house learning to live again those places are wonderful so was Joe. He was a different boy. Clean. In every sense. Well, I'm sorry to ask you about this. You're looking for a reason for him to disappear? Yeah. Um, if he ran into somebody from his bad old days. Or ran into trouble. The drug world's full of nasty people. I'm sure Joe wouldn't have had anything to do with them again. He was with his friends. He ran away once before, though, didn't he? Yes. Lived rough in a London squat for a year. But that was before he became a good mechanic. Before he could drive around his Jeep. Oh, by the way, did he send you a postcard from our flirt? No. Must have been somebody else then. Girlfriend? To the best of our knowledge, he didn't have one. Giving up drugs seemed to make him wary of being emotionally involved with anyone. They taught us about that. One in the eye for you. This proves my psychic trenchancy if proof were needed. Hmm? I was right, Trevor. I said salt had something to do with it. Maurice had more faith in me than you did. Well, Maurice may find there's no connection. Just a scrap of paper with numbers scribbled on it. Banya de mer. Much better than any sauna. The hot water soothes aches and pains and even teeny hangovers. I don't know about psychic trenchancy, Gladys, but Sergeant Evis may be right. You should stick to your usual market. Nonsense. Looking into things is my market. Joe's parents haven't given up hope. I've tried to help them. Well, I don't share their optimism. Yourself another gin, Gladys. You're gonna need it. What is it? They found that poor boy. No. They found your friend, the private detective, an hour ago. 
drowned in the Seine. 